Christian Radio for North Florida and South Georgia. Welcome to Striking the Balance with Pastor Christian Toth, the radio ministry of Calvary Chapel, Panama City Beach, Florida. We're so glad you've joined us today on Striking the Balance. Our vision as we open up the Word of God is to strike the biblical balance as we teach book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Thanks again for joining us today, and we hope and pray that these messages help strengthen your walk with Jesus. Coming up on today's program, we're closing out our study through the book of Acts as we finish up chapter 28. We'll learn of the Apostle Paul finally arriving in Rome after being falsely accused and in prison for over two years. We see from Paul's life that no matter how good or bad or hard the circumstances, he was always ready to share the love of Jesus with others and allow God to get the glory out of his circumstance. And now, here's Pastor Christian. So this is why we cannot be captives of the moment. You know, you're in a moment where people say, you're a murderer, or you're like the worst guy in the world. And then, you're the best guy in the world. Like, you're, oh man, you're, you're just amazing. Like, don't believe either. <laughs> don't believe either of that. You know what I mean? You know who you are. You know you're not who you were. Praise God for that. But you know you're not who you're supposed to be either. You got a long way to go. <laughs> right? We all do. So it's a process of sanctification. But we're saved by grace through faith. And God is working in us. So... It's interesting how quickly people change their minds and draw conclusions on things. And this is why we can't be captives of the moment. Even when we talk to other people and they have a different perspective of us. Please know this, dear brother and dear sister, that they too, these people, they too can be persuaded to have faith in Jesus Christ. Whoever they are that they're talking to. And sometimes God is, God is going to use hardships, like he used the hardship of a snake biting his hand. To, uh, in your life to draw others to Christ. So your hardships in your life, they might be there for a purpose. They might be there by intelligent design. God might have designed your hardships. So, in the midst of your hardship, pray that there's no harm that comes upon you. And pray that people come to Christ through your hardship. Because this is what the story is. And so we don't just teach the Bible, we live the Bible. So the reason we teach the Bible is so we can live the Bible, so we can get equipped, so we can live the Bible. Some people will not read the Bible. They will not. But they're going to read your life. You are the Bible that they read. You don't, there's people that will never open up a Bible. They, but they read your life. Because they know you're Christian. They'll read you. Especially in the hardships. Because your, your body language and your choices and your attitudes. They speak so loud. It's, it's unavoidable. They're going to read your life. And they're going to see how you deal with adverse circumstances. And when you decide to not make any big deal about it, because you took it to the Lord and you left it there. You didn't pick it back up. You know what I mean? You cast your cares, so now you don't care anymore because it's the Lord's problem. Because you gave it to Him. And you just go on with your life. And so their hypothesis, you're really challenging their hypothesis of you being a murderer, or being a bad guy, a bad girl. Their hypothesis about you and about your life is proven wrong based on the decisions that you make. And that is what God uses to open up their heart to change the way they view life as well. That's what God uses to draw people to Himself. One of the things He uses. Now notice the extreme in mindset. From assuming that Paul was a murderer to assuming that Paul was a God. In life, people are going to love us. People are going to hate us. Some are going to think that we're um, amazing. Some are going to think that we're not so amazing. That's why your identity is not based on what people tell you on social media. It's not how people label you. Your identity is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And so we know that we are in Christ. 
and God is sanctifying us into the image of Christ. So in that region, there was an estate of the leading citizens of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went into him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed, and also honored us in many ways. And when we departed, they provided such things as were necessary. So now the snake bites Paul. There's no harm. And next thing you know, you have this governor type of mayor, Publius, and he basically hosts Paul for three days. He, and he shows him some more kindness and he takes care of him. And then Publius' dad, he was sick with the fever. So Paul goes and lays his hands on him. And that's how we lay hands when we pray. We put you know, our hand on somebody's shoulder and we pray for them because it's biblical. And so when we put his hand on him, then Publius' dad was healed. And so when the natives saw that they were healed, all that had diseases came and they prayed and God decided to heal all of them. Don't you love that? But it took the hardship from the natives to change their minds saying Paul's a murderer to like, please pray for us. Isn't that incredible? God's wisdom, how he works. So first the Lord uses a snake situation in Paul's life to change the hearts of the natives and Paul's attitude towards it. Then the Lord gives Paul and his companions, which is Luke. Luke is the writer of the book of Acts and others. Favor with this mayor, governor of that region. His father was laid uh, sick with the fever, and Paul went into him and prayed, laid a hand on him, and healed him. Now we have many examples in the Bible where the gifts of the Holy Spirit were transmitted through the laying on of hands. Years ago, 12 years ago-ish, I was in Haiti because they had an earthquake. I was on a mission trip. And we're walking around these tent cities. So tent cities, they're probably like from here to Pier Park. It was tents. And that was people's homes because they lost their homes from the earthquake. Now, just so you know about Haiti, it's historically a lot of witchcraft. A lot of like New Orleans type of Mardi Gras, darkness, Satan. It's not fun in games, guys. So it's, it's historically, significantly satanic place. There's this earthquake and so many people died in Haiti that the oldest people in Haiti were 40 years old. Everybody that was over 40 uh, pretty much died off. The earthquake, I believe, was in 2010. So we went there on a mission trip. And these people lost their homes. So their homes were tents. And so I was walking with the team uh, through there. And, you know, the streets are, it's just, it's, it's not a street. It's, I, would, I, would, I would describe it more as a gutter. It was just gutter, trash, you know. There's no toilets, so they got to figure it out somewhere. As a matter of fact, where we stayed, we, God gave us favor, you know, God gave us favor with the, with the vice president of the country, and we stayed at his house uh, as a missionary, because uh, a lot of people became Christians. So God wins. So the darkness and the demonic, and now you have a, bu- a bunch of people turning to the Lord, and they were like the most, the most beautiful people I've ever met in my life. They were so close to heaven, I was like, unbelievable. I have so many stories, but... Time doesn't permit me to go into all of them. So we'll stay on track. But we're in this tent city. So I I walk in and there was this uh, gentleman. Maybe he was 70 years old. And he was just sitting up on his bed. And, you know, they speak Creole, which is a variation of French. So they don't speak English. But um, I asked if if I can pray for him. So he said, okay. So I put my hand on his shoulder. And when I put my palm on his shoulder, I felt the heat in his body. He he had a fever, right? And we're, we're teaching about Pauline hands of Publius' father. So I prayed for him. As I prayed for him, within seconds, I felt his body temperature go down. Within seconds. And praise God for that. And we, we walked outside, and then our group that was separated, uh, a part of our group, they said that they had the same experience with somebody else at a different tent at the same time. God's mercy. So after three months, we sailed in an Alexandrian ship whose figurehead was the twin brothers, which had winter at the island. And landing at Syracuse, we stayed three days. From there, we circled around and reached Regium. And after one day, the south wind blew. And the next day, we came to uh, Puteoli, where we found brethren. And they invited us to stay with them seven days. So what a blessing it is to be away from your home and to find believers in Jesus Christ. You're automatically home with other people in the body of Christ. 
Because all Christians are part of the family of God. Even if you just meet somebody for the first time. Because the Spirit of God is in them. And they're born again just like you. You have that instant uh, bond. And that instant refreshment that comes from the Lord. When God's family gets together. That's what the Bible tells us. And God knows that we need fellowship. We need to go to church. We need to be with each other. The Bible says don't forsake the assembly of the brethren together. As you see the day approaching. And you know, God has given you gifts of the Holy Spirit. And when you're at church, you give God an opportunity to use your gifts, whether it's the gift of the word of wisdom, whether it's the gift of helps, whatever gifts God gives you. And then you can edify and build up others in the body of Christ. And other people use their gifts to edify and build you. That's why this does not happen when you stay at home and watch church on TV. Because that is not God's design. God's design is for you to exercise the gifts of the Holy Spirit to bless others and to be blessed by others. That's how God biblically has designed it to be. Now, in our generation, what they're doing right now is they're looking at church and they're deciding, is church practical? Is it convenient for me? Can I pencil in God in my schedule? After I do what's important, can I squeeze them in? Maybe cancel an appointment here and there and give them a chance? Our generation is more apt to gather together, maybe to watch at home, than to gather together with the brothers and sisters. Sometimes um, you have examples like sports superstars, you know, maybe professional baseball players. They, uh, maybe they have their own pastors. You know, I don't need to go to church. I, I hired a pastor. I have enough money to pay this, this guy's full salary. You know, he, he makes more money with me than he would make to pastor a church. So he, uh, just give me a sermon. And uh, I don't have to go to church because I have my own pastor. Give me a message. Not too far from us. Not too far from Panama City Beach. I'm not going to tell you which direction. There's a church. The congregations are very wealthy. And they decided that the message is only going to be 12 minutes long. And the reason they decided that is because time is money. (laughs) So we got to get in and out. Because I got to go make money. So you have 12 minutes to teach me about the Bible. Because I got to go make money. That's happening today. Not too far from us, very close. So they squeeze God into their schedule. Or others watch online because it's convenient and they don't want to go anywhere. You don't have to go far away to go to church. You don't have to drive the 98 or Back Beach or Front Beach Road. You know, you don't have to fight traffic to go to church. People can find their own thing to do. Why make all this effort? I could just have church in my backyard. I can kind of redesign God's biblical plan for the church. I can have my convenient location where there's no traffic, there's no hassle. I know that God says we're supposed to meet in the tabernacle, which, you know, modern day is the church. But, you know, that kind of doesn't appeal to some of our generation. You know, sometimes we don't even cook our own meals. We want DoorDash. You know, we don't want to go to the movie theaters. We want the movies there. Everything serve me, serve me, right? We're have to repent a little bit of our self-centeredness. And so Paul says we went, well, Luke says that we went toward Rome. And from there, when the brethren heard about us, they came to meet us as far as Opry Forum and Three Inns. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. So notice here that the Lord used the brethren to give Paul courage. You see that? Because he met with the brethren, he got courage. You wonder why there's a lot of chickens out there and they're not courageous? It says the ungodly flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. You being here today, God has given you courage. Whatever you're going to face, whether it's a hardship, whether it's going to be somebody, whatever it is, you have gained courage. And you saw their brothers and sisters who they're going through different things. And iron sharpening iron. You gave God an opportunity to make you strong for Him. Paul saw that people were getting saved. So no matter what Paul was going through, it was all worth it. Sometimes the Lord allows us to be in places of storms, like Panama City Beach, where we hide in our closets, or shipwrecks, because that's where His people are, and that's His heart. The iron will sharpen iron, so does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. Now when we came to Rome, the centurion, which is the leader of our hundred, delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with the soldiers who guarded him. So Paul got special favor that he didn't have to be locked up because he, you know, they knew he was innocent. 
but he, he appealed to go to Caesar. So the Lord blesses Paul because he was innocent and put him just with the soldier, but he had freedom to roam around and do his life. And it came to pass after three days that Paul called on the leaders of the Jews together. So when they had come together, Paul said to them, Men and brethren, though I have nothing against our people, he's, I'm not here to complain about the Jews or the custom of our fathers. Yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. So when they had examined me, wanting to let me go, because there was no cause for putting me to death, but when the Jews spoke against it, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, not that I had done anything to accuse of my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have called you to see you and to speak with you, because the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain." So Paul is wanting to assure the Jewish leadership in Rome that he's not there to speak bad about the nation of Israel. That's not his purpose. He's there because of a political situation where they actually try to kill him for preaching the gospel. And he had to make his appeal to kind of save his life and God kind of use that to preach the gospel some more in Rome. So he wanted to assure them that he wasn't there to be a, a troublemaker. He wasn't there to make any derogatory accusation against the nation of Israel. The hope of Israel, of course, was the hope of the coming Messiah. And this was Paul's message. This is what he preached from day until night. And this is still the hope of Israel today, that the Messiah will come, the Prince of Peace. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but there will be no peace in Jerusalem until the Prince of Peace comes back and sets foot on that land. And this is the hope, Paul said, I am bound with this chain. And they said to him, we don't know what you're talking about. They said, we neither received letters from Judea concerning you, nor have any of the brethren who came reported or spoken any evil of you. But we desire to hear from you what you think. You tell us. We don't know these accusations against you. He says, for the, concerning the sect, meaning the way, meaning the Christians, we know that it's spoken against everywhere. It's spoken evil of. So the Christians, being a Christian was actually a derogatory term. It was, it was you're, oh, you're Christ-like. That wasn't like, we, we look at it as like it's a good thing, right? We were, we were actually labeled Christians because before it was called, they were of the way. The way, the truth, and life. The way of Jesus. Oh, you guys are Christians. So that was like, like, a, that was like a put down. And he says, we hear that, you know, Christians are bad. So Paul, you tell us. So what a, what a good opportunity for Paul to preach the gospel of the more excellent way. They were willing to listen to Paul, what he had to say about Jesus, about the Christian faith. So when they have appointed him a day, so they schedule him to speak in front of them, many came to him at his lodging where Paul was staying, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God. And here's what Paul did. And this is where I titled my message from. Persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning until evening. I love that. Paul was just teaching them with their own script. He built the bridge. He's talking to Jews. So he went back to the Old Testament. Whoever you're talking to, build a bridge and then bring Christ. Find something in common. You guys like, like uh, Atlanta Braves? Talk about Atlanta Braves? Bring Christ. You know, you guys like cars? Talk about cars? Bring Christ. Build a bridge. All of us are created to build a bridge with unbelievers so we can bring Christ. Build a bridge and bring Christ. So Paul gives, the Lord gives Paul an amazing opportunity as he brought many people to Paul where he was staying. Paul explained to them about the kingdom of God. And he persuaded them concerning Jesus from the Old Testament, which is what the Jews were familiar with. This was their bridge. Now, part of the Old Testament, not the whole Old Testament, part of it is the Law of Moses, and part of it, uh, which is the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And part of the Old Testament is the prophets. You have the major prophets, which is Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And they're referred to as the major prophets, not because they're more important, but because of the size of their writings. So the, the books are more chapters. They're lengthier. So they're labeled as the major prophets. They're major just because their books are long, not because they're more important, because all scripture is important and all scripture is God breathed. And then you have the minor prophets, which have shorter, uh, shorter um, prophecies and books in the Bible, which are the books of Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. So Paul used all those books that I just listed, and he preached Jesus from them. Did you know that Jesus is in all those books? The Bible says, in the volume of book, it is written of me. 
So any book that we're going to teach, Jesus is there. And if you don't find Jesus in the book, I don't know. I don't know what to say after that. Because Jesus is there. Paul preached to them all day from morning until evening. And some were persuaded. Praise God. See the result? Some were persuaded. Healthy sheep beget, beget other sheep. But some disbelieve. So it's okay. Some people are not going to believe. And we, God doesn't violate their will. And we're not going to violate the will. But we're going to give them a chance to come to Christ. And this is always the response. Some are persuaded. And we thank God for that. So when they did not agree among themselves, the Jews, they depart after Paul has said to, uh, one word. So now Paul quotes uh, Isaiah, which we covered this last Wednesday night. And basically here, there's a prophecy in Isaiah that Luke records here that Paul said, which is basically like, the gospel came to the Jews. Some of you guys believed, but mostly you guys rejected it. So now the gospel is going to go to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles are going to believe and they're going to get saved. So this is the prophecy in Isaiah. And it's repeated here in Acts chapter 28. Here's a prophecy. It says, the Holy Spirit spoke. Don't you love that? And we're studying, we're studying the Holy Spirit on Wednesday nights. He speaks. God is so good to us. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our father saying, Go to this people and say, So the prophets went to the nation of Israel. Here you will hear and you shall not understand. So you're hearing the message, but you're choosing not to understand it. Seeing, you will see and not perceive. You see, but you choose, you're rejecting Jesus. The nation of Israel as a whole rejected Jesus. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. You kind of harden your heart. Their hearts are hard to the Lord. This is the prophecy. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Notice here that they closed their eyes. You see that? They chose. Like, remember when Lazarus was... Raised from the dead. That was evidence. And you know what the Jews wanted to do? Kill Lazarus. Destroy the evidence. So they closed their... Oh no, we don't see anything. That was their choice. They closed... Um, and the Bible says that blindness has happened in part, in part to Israel. But he's coming back and he's going to open up their eyes after the rapture. And they will come to faith. Lest... Here's, here's how the Jews are going to be saved... Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, which some Jews do turn to Jesus. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn. If you have your uh, highlighter or pen, highlight, circle, underline, turn. This is a key word. This kind of like emphasizes what this passage is about. Lest they should turn. There needs to be a turning. Turning away from the world and turning to Christ. This is repentance. Lest they should turn so that I should heal them. Notice here that God doesn't say, I've elected them to go to hell. He says, lest they should turn. They have an option to turn. You have an option to turn. If you're not right with God today, you can get right with Him. Just turn in your heart to the Lord. The Holy Spirit is speaking through Isaiah and says that even though all the evidence is in to believe in Jesus as a personal Savior, some people in the majority of the Jewish nation chose their sin. They love their sin because sin is pleasurable for a season. They chose sin over choosing to turn to Jesus and to repent. So that the Lord will heal them if they would turn to Him. There's healing. There's spiritual healing that happens. There's heaven for those who turn. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and they will hear it. So now, since you guys rejected it, the salvation... Is going to the Gentiles. Anybody who's not Jewish. So if you're not Jewish, you're a Gentile. I'm a Gentile. We're Gentiles if you're not Jewish. So the final message that Paul gives to the Jewish people is that the salvation of God will be preached to the Gentiles. Wow. Any nation that's not Jewish will hear about Jesus Christ. And when he has said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. Then Paul dwelt Two whole years in his own rented house, and he received all who came to him. And what did Paul do? This is how the book of Acts ends. He says, preaching the kingdom of God. This is what we're supposed to be doing today. This is what we're doing today. And teaching the things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Thanks so much for joining us today on Striking the Balance with Pastor Christian Toff. We hope and pray that today's word was a blessing to your life and walk with the Lord. If you happen to miss any part of today's message or would like to hear more teachings from Pastor Christian, take a moment to explore our website, calvarypcb.com.
If you're looking for a home church, we extend a warm invitation for you to join us in person at Calvary Chapel, Panama City Beach. We meet Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. Child care is provided at both services. For location and other info about our church, once again, our website is calvarypcb.com. Or you can email us at info at calvarypcb.com. We'd also love for you to connect with us on social media on both our Instagram and Facebook pages by searching for Calvary Chapel PCB. Your connection means a lot to us, whether here on Striking the Balance or online. And of course, we'd love the opportunity to worship Jesus with you in person. Thanks for listening today, and we hope you'll join us again next time on Striking the Balance. Striking the Balance is brought to you by Calvary Chapel, Panama City Beach.